So this time I thought I'd do something a bit different. I recently picked up a job lot of paperwork for Action Man. Now, if you didn't already know, I'm a big Action Man collector. I've been collecting for about five years now. Always trying to find anything I can get my hand off, hands on when it comes to Action Man. So I thought we could have a look on these leaflets. So I got a few leaflets in a um, job lot. And they were in the main, mainly the leaflets for like the special operations kit and that sort of thing. But one of the things it did come with is a few of these Action Man equipment manuals. And these equipment manuals were sold um, in Action Man boxes. So when you bought a figure with a box, they would be inside as well. And they would give kids an idea of what kind of items were in the range for them to pick up. The best thing about these sort of manuals is occasionally you'll see things which were never released. Or you'll see some items which were, as we can say, uh, prototypes. So the front cover has the amazing Palatoy logo. To me that's the most iconic Palatoy uh, logo. It's the most well known of their, their branding really. So this was released in 1976. This magazine, I'm going to have a look at a few pages shall we. The first page you got the Scorpion Tanks on the right here. Grenadier Guards at the back. The um, Army Majors there. We have the um, Royal Military Police. You have the, um, the cannons there. The Land Rover, which is really cool. It's a really cool vehicle to pick up. If anyone ever finds it, you know, it's always, if you ever see it for sale cheap, pick it up because it's worth a lot of money. And it's always good to get ones for spare parts because they're always broken. And of course, you also have the armoured car on the front. So the first page comes along with the field commander and his radio, radio pack. So this came in like a large box. Um, it's a very, very popular set. So he, I'm not really sure if he was a talker or not. I don't think he was. It wouldn't make sense if he was because the backpack has these really cool um, little records that go in the back. They're little mini uh, vinyl records. Play some like, um, like action commands and stuff like that. But yeah, very popular set to get hold of. Then we have the basic soldier. He's wearing the black beret and if you can see, it looks really extra shiny. And next to him is the adventurer. Adventurers always came with a beard. You know, you need, you need a beard if you're an adventurer. And you've got the, um, the Royal Navy sailor. Always really cool to pick up these sailors. Um, they can be quite tricky to, um, to find in good condition because they kind of fade quite often. And the hats get quite frayed. And they're always like the, the white shirt gets stained. So if you ever do see one in good condition, pick it up. They always look in people's collections. And then we've got Atomic Man. Atomic Man was released in the States as Mike Powers. He was basically kind of like a um, cash-in on the whole Six Million Dollar Man uh, kind of franchise, basically. He has, where a Six Million Dollar Man has a hole in the back of his head where you can look through his eye. This one's a bit cheaper. He has like a little hole on top of his head. And when light goes through it, it can make his eye kind of shine up. It's pretty cool, it's like got a bit of a bit of an afro going on, very 70s. And he's also got like see-through arms. Some people um, don't really like this sort of period of Action Man stuff. They think it's kind of where Action Man kind of um, took with a sidestep really. And went away from the military theme and became a bit more fantasy themed. But I still like it. Then you have the um, the amazing Grenad um, ceremonials, the Grenadier Guard and the Royal Lifeguard. When I first started collecting Action Man, the, um, the Grenadier Guard was one of the first ones I wanted to get, really. To me, it's very, very iconic, but I don't really see that many people's collections nowadays. People don't really talk about him that much, but I think it's, it's an amazing set. It's a very popular set at the time. The Lifeguard set is obviously one of the most beautiful um, toys ever made. The detail is incredible for it. It's, I mean, you can get, obviously, like high-detailed, high-end dragon toys nowadays, like Dragon in Dreams, sort of high quality one six figures but I think see, as this was marketed towards kids it's pretty impressive the level of detail they went to then we have the army major British army officer sorry and we also have the um, British, Royal, Royal, British military British Royal Military Police and then the um, British infantry Tommy he was raced in the um, Soldiers of the Century uh, line and the Soldiers of the World line, and I think he was pretty much made all the way up to the end of the, of the Action Man run. Always popular. 
Now, if you ever collect Action Man, you probably will find in your collecting uh, lifetime that you will find some bundles of Action Man. And whenever I find bundles of Action Man stuff, I always, always, without fail, find Mountain Arctic um, items. I've never, I don't think I've ever had an Action Man lot where it hasn't come with the white jacket or the trousers or the boots. Um, when you do collect the white, um, these outfits, they will be a little bit stained, a little bit worn, and a little bit um, faded and dirty. But you can actually just, you know, a bit of hot water and soap, and they will come up and look quite nice. One thing to look out for when you were um, buying these ones are the ski poles are notorious for snapping, especially at the bottom. They were the French Resistance Fighter. This was released in the um, Soldiers of the World series and the Soldiers of the Century series. Next up is the French Foreign Legion. If you notice, he will he comes with the dark blue uh, coat. You can get this in two colours, or two um, shades of colour. This is the more common dark blue one. There's also a light blue one, which kind of matches the sash going around his, uh, around his waist. Um, this is a lovely little figure, but it's usually quite hard to put together because the gun end usually snaps, the belt was quite hard to... Um, find complete and usually the um, white sash, white sash, the blue sash is missing. And next to him is the Australian Jungle Fighter. So the Australian Jungle Fighter was released in the original Soldiers of the Century series in the late 60s. But when they released it in the um, mid 70s, it was in the Soldiers of the World line, they decided to basically change into a green outfit and put the trousers on him as opposed to shorts. Um, he still has the backpack frame thrower, but this time it looks a bit different. It's like a multicoloured look. It comes with a bandolier, it goes around his waist and around his torso. <sighs> so the Germans were always popular in the Action Man line. And during the early 70s, they kind of needed something to kind of like keep that momentum going. The Germans were always popular in the Action Man line. And when they got into the mid 70s, they needed to try and keep that momentum going. So they released the German staff officer. Now he's pretty cool. He comes with very uh, slightly different um, trousers than the rest of the German soldier line. They come out of the side. He also comes with the German cap as well, which is pretty cool. Then you have an updated version of the um, mine detector. That's a very cool toy if you ever find one. They still they actually do work. And then we have the Red Devil and the parachute regiment. And then we have the tank commander, which is one of my favourite uniforms actually. You can get them in loads of different shades of um of brown, black, and um like a dark green leather jacket. It's always really good, always looks good in armoured cars and tanks. Next up you've got the um, Secret Mission Dragon Island set. This is a pretty cool set. It's one of those sets where similar to G.I. Joe, G.I. Joe in the 70s used to release sets which were themed. It could be one where it's like Hunt for the White Tiger, that sort of thing. So they did it in Action Man for this set. And it comes with um, a really unique green bag, which has like a hard plastic and it has loads of different little items in it, including the really rare gold pliers. The uniform is unique to the set as well. Very cool one to look out for if you ever do find it. And then we have the Commando. And he actually comes with a crayon so you can actually draw on his face to give him some camouflage, which is a bit of a unique idea often missing and very hard to find. And then we have the salt craft, which he's standing on. Very popular and very easy to come across. Next up is the Royal Marines Exploration Team. This is a really cool, unique set. It comes with a very large um, life raft, and a very uh, unique um, life jacket vest, an orange helmet, and it also comes with an actual camcorder for Action Man, which is in his hand. It's a very, very um, interesting set, very cool set. It uses the clothes are very similar to the Australian Jungle Fire, a kind of um, like kind of light green. Now onto some play sets. So on the left you've got the rifle rack, very, very popular in the um, 70s. The action man is actually sat on a part of a bunk bed. If you bought these beds back in the day, you can actually rack them up and have all your, all your action man all sat up together in bed, which is a bit weird. Um, and next up is the um, the 1970s medic, very lovely set, I love the medics. And next to that is the special operations tent, really really popular but very fragile. 
and to me I find it really hard to put together and hold it up because the pegs are always a bit too thin and a bit too pulley never really work then you've got the Land Rover again and the Land Rover comes with or on the back this time you can buy it separately the trailer it's really really lovely when it's complete but I often find them broken and the canvas is always ripped, torn, stained but you need to give them a good iron if you can get hold of a nice one just look really smart when it's up but it's always hard to try and find those pieces and at the bottom we also have the um, Action Man uh, motorbike and sidecar one of the things people ha um, talk about when they talk about Action Man which they had as a kid they also mentioned they have the Cherry Lee uh, motorbike and sidecar to actually find the Action Man one is actually quite rare I mean you can get them but I've never really found one in a job lot I've always found one where it's been sold as, a, as, as what it is and the dispatch rider is there as well. Then you've got the ever so popular Action Man Scorpion Tank. And at the back you have the Scout Car. And in between you have the Belt Fed Machine Gun, which actually contains batteries. The batteries go in the ammo box and it will actually, when you pull the trigger back, it will make a bit of a noise and it will move forward. Then you have the 105mm light gun. Very popular set. The pin is always missing. If you ever find one, always looks ni nice in somebody's collection, but it's pretty big. And then we have the helicopter set. If you see notice, there's also a searchlight, which is pretty cool. Searchlight takes some back like, big batteries at the bottom, and it actually works. And at the back, you've got the turbocopter. One thing that people thought was when you press the button on the side, you can make the propeller move. A lot of kids would say that they thought. It actually would fly, which is a bit of a false advertising. But it's still quite a unique, cool set thing to have. Some people laugh at it now, but I always thought it good. And then the bottom, you got the Royal Air Force uniform. And then we've got some sabotage outfit on the left. It was got a scuba diver there, or frogman, should we say? The Royal um, RNLI uh, rescue set and the survival set. The survival set didn't come with a figure, it just came with just a wrath and the bits. Now one of the things with Action Man was, um, a lot of people tell me back in the day it was quite expensive. A figure with like, the equivalent of paying like £35 now. So what they would do is, these sort of things would be on the front of counters, and they'd be pocket money sort of toys. you get either a special missions pod here, which come with like the black, kind of very much SES already. They would kind of be, be, be rebranded as SES in the future. And then the Action Man Special Operations Kit, which contained all these items. Very easy to get hold of this kit. And when I first started collecting Action Man, I would often go online and try and research things, items that were like available at the time that I didn't know of. And I can remember seeing this for sale, and I went on Gumtree and found somebody locally who was selling it for like £10. I picked it up. Now I honestly thought it'd be quite a small item. I didn't think it'd be that big. But when I finally put it together, it's pretty tall. I mean, if you have one of these, you need a bit of room in your collection to actually display it. If you look at the figures climbing it, and that really does show the scale that it's like, um, the training tower is a really, really cool set. Um, it's not that expensive for what it is. And if you have an action man room, or you have a big garden, somewhere to play with it, I recommend picking one of these up. It's really well made. It's really cool. Then we have some equipment center cards. So you can get the um, machine guns, the bazookas, grenade launchers, and mortars. And one of the things about the equipment center cards was you could actually mix and match your sets. So a lot of people think that this person here is actually kind of like a Russian, which I think is quite cool. It's great, you've got the Russian ammo box and the Russian gun. So it's nice to have a new additional Russian in the set. But honestly, these ones you could just mix and match. Then you've got some jungle, jungle explorer, polo explorer, and the mountain rescue, deep sea diver, and the action man skyhawk. I've, these were already popular about five, six years ago. Really easy to come by, but nowadays I just can't find them. It's pretty big. You can see the figure is on the actual um, hawk itself. And they do actually fly. It's a really nice set to get hold of if you can. On this YouTube channel, you can actually view one of the adverts for the toy. 
Cool, and that's it. And obviously at the back, we have the Action Man Star Scheme. Now the Star Scheme was quite simple. Every Action Man um, item from a sale contains some stars on the front. You cut them out, send them away, and you get an item. If, for example, you had 21 stars, you can get an undressed Action Man. You can get the Royal Man Canadian Mountie outfit, a guard dog, a wall poster, or a sentry box. I probably would have gone for the sentry box out of me. But it's pretty cool. It's one of those things you don't really see that much anymore. Because they're in a card, they tend to wear and break easily. But anyway, thank you much for watching. Hopefully, do some more of these. See you later.